everybody. My name is Brady Johnson, superintendent of the Iron Statesville Schools. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our first installment of Education Talk. This is a series of discussions that we're having with folks throughout our school community about some of the great opportunities that we have for children in our community and also to just engage our learning community in discussions that we think the public might be interested in uh, to learn more about the great things that are going on in our school system as well as some of the challenges that we face. For our first installment, we are in Troutman at the Career Academy and Technical School, and we're focusing today on the students that are enrolled in the Fire Science Academy. And uh, this is a good looking group of young men uh, that we hope to learn more about their program today. And we're gonna start off with their instructor, Mr. Gerald Clodfelter. Uh, Mr. Clodfelter, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be part of the Fire Science Academy here at Trout. Mr. Johnson, I've been a volunteer for almost 35 years and I worked for the city of Conover as a paid firefighter for seven. And about that time, they decided to uh, move the program to CATS. It was started at Senior High School, and they moved it to CATS. And I was approached by a couple different folks to apply for the job, and I did. And I've been here three years now. Uh, so we're in our third year uh, at CATS. So we're four years into our program. It's like the first year we started at State School. So, just from the experience, and I've been an instructor in the fire service for, for about 15 years teaching uh, through the community college, and, and this gave me an opportunity to, to teach through, to teach high school kids and young kids, uh, and that's part of the fire service's philosophy is mentorship and bringing new people into the service. Uh, kind of how I got here. Good, good. And of course, our mission ultimately is to prepare these young men for a career in college and hopefully for career opportunities right here in our local community. And uh, hopefully we're gonna see these young men uh, make careers out of fire science. Uh, guys, let's, let's meet each of you. If you can introduce yourself and tell us the home school that you come from uh, to the uh, career academy. Let's start up on the back row. Uh, my name is Ian Ellisle. I'm from Lake Norman High School. Uh, this school has really helped me a lot. Um, it's really helped me further my education in uh, the fire department. Uh, it's really given me a kickstart uh, to get all my classes done. So when I get out of high school, it gives me um, that little step ahead and uh, I can get uh, my fire career started early. Good. My name is Cody Stiles. I'm a junior at Lake Norman High School. This is my second year in the CATS fire technology program. and. I'm a junior at Lake Norman Volunteer Fire Department. Very good. My name is Bailey Jones. I go to Lake Norman High School. I'm a senior, be graduating this year, and I volunteer at Shepherds. And I just feel like this class has really helped me get my like do my certifications that way I can be a step ahead. My name is Hunter Banks. I go to Statesville High School. I'm a rising senior, and um, I just I, it's given me a great stepping block to get into the fire service. My name is Brandon Ryder. I've been at Fire Tech for about, this is my first year. I'm a Trinity, or a volunteer at Trinity Volunteer Fire Department. Um, this, this class has really helped me be career ready, and it's helped me get all the certifications I need to be able to step right into my career. My name is Mason Garver. Uh, I'm a late one volunteer fire department as a junior. I've been there for in between three to four years. Um, I'm a junior as well at uh, Lake Norman High School, and uh, this this program has done more than just gives a stepping block. It's given us more of a uh, an overlook of what the fire service is like with ride-alongs and all that great stuff we got to do. Uh, just really appreciate the opportunity. Good. Well, guys, I know it takes a lot of uh, resources to uh, provide a program like this, and when I come into your classroom, I'm really impressed because you've got this fire engine sitting here behind us. You've got lots and lots of equipment and uh, training gear. Uh, tell us that, the story behind that. How did you acquire all of the materials to, to make this uh, program possible? Well, for the program to even exist, we have to have a local fire department sponsors, and that's Troutman Fire Department. And it started out with Statesville, and since we moved to Troutman, it was obviously a fit to, to, to change sponsors. Um, 
but the trunk was donated to Mitchell College, and with their lack of facility to store it, it got stored at Cats. And once we started our program here, we got the truck from Mitchell, and now it's, it's ours. And you say this is our classroom. I don't call it a classroom. This is our powerhouse. And, and we, we want to make it look at We've got our equipment and gear here. Um, and so that's, we call it our fire station instead of our classroom. Um, we got a bunch of gear. Uh, most of the gear that we have is used. Um, obviously, it's very expensive. And we don't teach live fire training yet um, because that's not part of the state's curriculum. But all of our gear has been donated by local fire departments. And so we're still getting life out of it. It's still getting used. Um, and so we've got plenty of gear. We've just received some new air packs or used air packs that we're going to put in the service and uh, be able to have those for students to be able to do that. Uh, but when I need equipment, I've borrowed it from different departments, different times for things. And so right now we've pretty much got about everything that we need to, uh, to we could fight fire if necessary. Uh, hopefully by the end of the third year of their, of their training or the third semester of it, they, they'd be ready to, to put out fire if we had one. Impressive. Well, guys, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about uh, how, how does a student get into this program? At what stage in your high school career did you hear about this? And was it a guidance counselor that, that steered you in this direction? Are there courses that you take at your traditional high school to prepare you for this? Uh, tell us a little bit about that process. Anybody? Uh, Mr. Johnson, my, uh, my first interest in this program, I was a freshman in high school, and I saw it under the electives as you know, classes we could take. And I, I saw that fire technologies program, and I said to my dad, who used to be a volunteer fireman, I said, you know, that, that's something I think I'd really like to take. And um, I, I investigated a little bit deeper and talked to a guidance counselor, and she told me that as a junior, I'd, I'd be eligible to take it. Now, for me in particular, I was lucky, and during my sophomore year of school, I was able to get involved in this program, which was which was great, and I've, I've benefited greatly from that. Okay. Anybody else? Um, I actually learned about the program whenever I started my junior firefighting at Trinity. Um, our chief came up to me and he said, well, on your certifications where you become a firefighter, you're going to turn 18. And uh, I saw that as my opportunity and told me, you know, this class will help you get everything you need, take this, and Help you. So I uh, researched it a little bit, and um, my junior year, I came over here and took Firefighter 1 and 2, and then this semester I'm taking Firefighter 3. Um, but I kind of got the better end of the bargain because most of the time you have to take the prerequisite, which is uh, intro to public safety. With me being a senior, I didn't have that long to be able to do that prerequisite. So I just kind of was able to jump right into it. Very good. Good. So there's multiple pathways into the program. Um, guys, now I know uh, it takes a lot of training and a lot of certifications before you can even start uh, hanging around the firehouse and, and working as a volunteer and whatnot. Uh, how many of you guys are actually working for a volunteer fire department now on a part-time basis? Yes, sir. So all of you. And uh, as, you, as you work on your certifications and whatnot, uh, I'm, I'm beginning to hear that there's a new certification EMT, which uh, is emergency medical technician, I believe. Ms. Claude Felder, tell us a little bit about that, and, and that's going to be another course that's offered here at the Career Town in the future, isn't it? Yes, sir. We're hoping so. We've got some uh, already working on getting some donations for that uh, coming through. Uh, one of the rescue squads are going to donate us an ambulance that they decommission uh, for what we do with it. Uh, it'll work great. But every fire department runs medical calls. And so a big part of being, not only do we fight fire, we have to go in for medical calls. So there's a basic part of medical in the fire, fire program, but the counties don't recognize that as a first responder. They require at least a minimum of an EMT. And so that will be another thing for these kids to come out of here with that certification. And they said something about being 18 years old. Mm -hmm. They can't become certified until they're 18 because our programs are modeled after the state, uh, Office of State Fire Marshal. But 
they get all the experience. They do the same thing if you were trained to be a farmer in Charlotte or Statesville or Mooresville, uh, that we do the same basic training that they do. Uh, we do some PT, we do uh, all the drills that they have to do for whatever, uh, any department, and then that way we become ready when they get 18 years of age. Uh, they're the hazmat part of it, and I've got three that have gone through on their own at night and taken hazmat class. Uh, and again, they get that certification until they're 18, but mm -hmm. they've already taken yeah, that step. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I just, you know, we talk about education, and now in the fire service, we want more educated people. And they have to have, a lot of them want you to have a two-year degree in fire science. And I've got a couple that have already started that process to the career in college promise and taking online classes working toward their two-year degree in fire science. So uh, it's, there's lots of opportunities, uh, especially through the school, uh, to make this happen. Mm -hmm. Guys, I notice out back here you've got uh, what I refer to as a fire tower. I'm not sure that that's the right terminology, but uh, what is that uh, building out there and what's it used for? It's a, it's a training building. Yes, sir. That's, uh, that's exactly what it is. Uh, it's, it's only maintenance right now as it is still new to this school in particular. And um, when it's finished, hopefully that will provide students with, uh, with a great place to practice what they've learned throughout this class for different, uh, different classes. Now, I noticed you guys are wearing a shirt today with your emblem of the uh, fire academy here. Uh, and I understand that you guys designed that emblem yourself. Uh, tell, tell me what that emblem stands for. The, uh, the Maltese cross represents courage, if, if you would please, um, which signifies what we're about. Any, any task that, uh, that comes to us, we approach it with, uh, with a great deal of courage. Break it down a little bit more. Um, the logo consists of the American flag. Uh, Everybody in the fire service, mm -hmm. medical service, any of that, that's kind of what we live by because this country gives us opportunities to do what we want, and this is what we've chosen. Uh, it has fire hydrant, which just symbolizes the National Fire Department. Um, cap and gown, just try to tie in the whole education process into the, the firehouse, and then um, in the middle of it, it'd be the 100. The 100 is we'll give 100% in everything we do here, uh, whether that's going over car education or going over. NIMS, which is National Emergency Management System. Um, it's, it's a big part of this, just like the American flag is a big part of the country. And the 100 on that emblem means what? We give 100%, 100% of the time. Uh, it don't matter what we're doing, whether it's putting out a fire with a fire extinguisher or going full on with a water hose. No matter what we do, we're giving 100%. Very good. Good. I love that. The beautiful emblem, too. Guys, what's the favorite part of all this training that you've done here in the Fire Academy? When you reflect back on the experience that you've had here at the Fire Academy, what, what's the lasting part that you're taking away with each of you? I think with the Ride Long program, we just got to see what it's actually like to be like riding long to running calls and everything. So we got to get a feel of like what it's like if you actually get a job. And so that means that you have, with your volunteer department, ridden along on calls and seen firsthand what the, the real practitioners are doing out there in the field. Not just from the volunteer, um, huge departments. Well, not huge, but big in this area. Mm -hmm. States of City or um, Mooresville. Troutman. Troutman. Mm -hmm. All those. That's not, I don't, nobody's on a volunteer so far as us. That was totally new to all of us. Okay. Um, so there was different things that we liked about each one. There was different yeah. things that we could take away and do better from if, if it was us. Um, so that ride along the program is really meaningful too because you're actually seeing firefighters performing uh, you know, in the line of duty real time. Yes, sir. And in, in certain circumstances, we, uh, we got to perform alongside them, not just sitting back and watching them perform. There were, uh, there were certain circumstances where, in, in my case, I was able to perform right alongside them. Yes, sir. Wow, great. Who else? What's your favorite part of the program? 
I think it would be the hands-on training um, because it's not just typical classwork that you do in a normal classroom environment. Uh, with this program and at this school, we kind of got to put our hands on hoses, ladders. Um, we got to do hands-on stuff more than just classroom stuff. And that kind of helps a little bit more in learning about what we're doing because you get a better idea of how to do it. Very good. I wonder if any of you would like to tell us, uh, obviously the taxpayers of Iredell County uh, have provided this program for you. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to say to uh, the citizens of our community uh, that provide educational services for you? Thank you. I'd, I'd like to extend a thank you to all of them for providing each and every one of us with this program here. Uh, whether or not they know how valuable this is to us, to be able to come right out of high school with all of these certifications minus fire control, which is something that we're unable to do being under the age of 18, being able to come out with every other certification aside from fire control is tremendous. There's a, there's, with this program, you're getting a return almost immediately. A lot of things that taxpayer pay for, it takes a while to see them like, come back towards you. Um, you'll see almost all of us, if medical calls, fires, we'll all be there. Um, I was talking about returns, if you money state for state road it takes a little while to see that state road come back it's a process but it's not going to take as near as long for us we're uh it's very valuable i think to the community very valuable. as soon as we get out of this program we'll be career ready to go out in our field and protect and serve those around us excellent excellent and uh, guys, in uh, talking to other prospective students throughout our school system, is there any words of encouragement that you could give to a student that's thinking about a career in public service or in, in fire science uh, that, that might encourage them to uh, consider this program? Get into it like you can. And when you do get into it, show everything that you've got. Give 100%, 100% of the time, just like we talked about show them that you want to be there because if you don't there are other people out there that want to be in the position that you're in it's competitive expanding on that what do you mean it's competitive mr Bob brothers talk about people who take the initiative to go to hazmat or take the initiative to start the tv program or just just to come here in general this is a, a huge initiative to take if you have to take this, this is not going to come to you, you have to grab it. It's uh, the two-year, I'm doing the two-year thing, um, I'm about a fourth of the way through that. Uh, hazmat, I was one of the three that did that. You have to, that's what jobs look for. Um, for every one position, there's a hundred people looking for that same position, and you have to be able to set yourself apart, and this program helps set yourself apart. Good. And Mr. Cloud Felter, I, if a student was interested in this, I guess their point of contact would be their guidance counselor or someone in their home uh, school that could give them information about this. Is that right? Yes, sir. I mean, when they register for classes, uh, it's, it's there. Speak to their guidance counselor. If they run into a stumbling block, call up here at the school and catch. And we'll be glad to get them, tell them exactly where they need to sign up, what they need to do to get, to get here. Uh, it takes a little finagling with their classes to get it lined up because they're here for three hours a day, half a day here, and then they go back to their home school. So it takes a little bit sometimes of changing classes around uh, to make it happen and get in the right groove to make that go. Uh, you know, I, I just, I know that we want to train these guys to be firemen. And hopefully, like I said, it's very competitive. For every person that applies, there's, there's or every position there's probably 15 or 20 people applying for that one and one of the chiefs told me he said make them fill out applications and on that application something that sets them apart and i think this this will because they have started early they've seen stuff and each one of these guys has done a job interview um, they went right along with three of the biggest fire departments in the county and their their chiefs their other captains that work there have already seen these guys. They've done that first job interview. Uh, so they, they've had a lot. 
And if they never become a paid career firefighter, if they serve their community uh, as a volunteer, like I have for 35 years, I think it's a great thing for them. Um, and if none of them, the students that come here don't pass my class, I, you know, I hope that when they leave here, they learn the theory behind or the thinking behind the fire service, that pride, integrity, the ownership. And I don't allow the janitor to come to my classroom. Uh, these guys clean my room. They enter the trash, they sweep them up the floors, they clean the equipment. So we're, hopefully we're teaching some other skills besides firefighting, but that, that sense of pride and ownership uh, that, and the traditions of the fire service. I hope that's what a lot of comes out of this. I know I'm willing to learn the firefighting end of it, but uh, I definitely want to learn that, that inner self pride that it takes to be a group of people working together. Very good. Well, guys, to say that we're proud of you is an understatement. You truly reflect the best and the brightest of our students in our school system. We thank you for being a risk taker and being an innovator and getting into this program early. Uh, you certainly have distinguished yourself and you set your program apart throughout the entire school system. And we are very, very proud of you. To our two seniors that are be graduating, we wish, we, uh, wish you the very, very best. And, Stay in contact now and let us know what becomes of you. Uh, but thank you, uh, gentlemen, for a job well done. Uh, thanks for participating in the program today, too. And to our listeners, thank you for taking time to, uh, to tune in and watch this informative video about the Fire Academy here in Troutman. Uh, we hope to bring you more information like this in the future. Uh, we do want to say thank you to our community who supports the public schools. We really do believe that our public schools are every child's chance in our community's future. And we want to make sure that we are giving our investors, our taxpayers, a good return on their investment and creating opportunities for the children in this community to come back and serve the community for years and years to come. We hope that you'll tune in again as we bring you more, inform more, more information like this and uh, tell the story about the Iredell Statesville Schools. Thank you again. <laughs>